Hey, welcome back to Thoughts of the Roundtable with me, Matt Rebar. And me, Paul Louts. And once again, joined by the awesome, the bewitching Mackenzie Jackson. Mackenzie, how are you? I am good. I'm ready to tell some spooky stories. Yes, we are so excited because we're calling it, we're dubbing this the Ghost Stories Holiday Edition. But as Mackenzie and I both were like figuring out, we're like, yeah, not a lot of like holiday spooking per se, but this might be a good palate cleanser for those out there who really don't want more Christmas things this time of year. So we're bringing the spookiness to your holiday season. So, yep. all right, Mackenzie. I, I, oh, Paul, go ahead. I've never heard of a spooky Christmas story, so I'm very excited for this. <laughs> if we if we if we manage to find one, we will have it tonight. I can't wait. Um, but yeah, Mackenzie, hit us up. Start <laughs> us with a tale. Alrighty, so this first one is called My Grandmother's Watch. So, yes. I lived in a haunted house. It was built by my parental grandfather in the 70s, and all four of my grandparents hung around the place. There's been everything from dreams to apparitions around here, but none of it's really frightening. We know the ghost and their family. My grandmothers, both maternal and paternal, are the most frequent visitors. They're notoriously active during the holiday season and today brought the first major paranormal experience. The holidays have truly begun. My mother and my niece were bringing up boxes of ornaments from the Christmas tree. They opened them up and my niece pulled out a velvet box. Now, we've been using the same boxes for ornaments since I was born. I've never seen this velvet box before. Mm. My niece asked my mother what it was. My mother took it from her and opened it. Inside was my maternal grandmother's vulva watch, which her husband gave to her on their wedding day in 1948. This watch is a big deal. It's a family heirloom, and my grandmother never took it off. My mother swears she did not inherit. And if she had, it wouldn't have been in a plastic tub of Christmas tree ornaments, nor would have been invisible for 11 years. It isn't the first case of my maternal grandmother causing jewelry to appear either. When I was very young, my mom lost her wedding ring. It was gone for over a month, and one morning, she opened her jewelry box, and it was sitting atop the earrings she'd worn the day before. So wait, can ghosts suddenly... I didn't think they could like mess with the physical realm like this. I thought they could. They can to a certain point, I believe, because I mean, I've heard of... Like things like being pushed and like shoved off like tables. That's what I was saying. Like, can't they like open like cabinets and like move stuff around? Yes. So like I kind of to some extent I believe it, but also I'm kind of like if you of what if a child just like grabbed it and put it in the box without them knowing. I here's the thing though, like a haunted watch to me is no big deal because I don't need a watch, right? (laughs) Like we all have our phones, you know. There's no, you know, we're not in the 1800s, so like. If a haunted watch showed That's gonna up, be a haunted iPhone when he's like a <laughs> periphery, you know. Now a haunted iPhone, I might or a haunted PS5, I would take the gamble on that. Haunted watch, I'm not gonna buy the haunted. No, watch. you're gonna be haunted headphones and just spew <laughs> things into people's ears and make them go nuts. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm a little suspicious of this one too. I just feel like maybe someone just like found it and didn't know what it was and put it in the box. Like, I, I, is it is it that ghostly? That's I don't what know. I- Cause like I read it and I was like, okay, maybe, but also, eh, I was, it's mm. such a hard like thing to do because like ghosts are like, they're smart, but also like, they're not that smart. <laughs> wait, are they <laughs> only the dumb people are ghosts. <laughs> wait, wait, I'm confused. Are they as smart as the person who died or are they ghosts just like, a, like have like room temperature IQ overall? Like. Um, I would think they're a smart guide, but also like, I don't think they would be like smart enough to like be like, oh, here's this watch. Let me just Easter egg it. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder too, like maybe the smart people when they die, they go, oh, I'm going on. Like, I'm going to leave. But the dumb people are like, I don't know. I'll just stick around and mess with watches. Is that why ghosts are dumb? Because the smart people bitch. go on. It's <laughs> <laughs> Well, that one was a little sus. I'm a little sus, but uh, hey, this is another one. Let's do this. I'm excited. Okay. So this next one is, I think my dog is seeing a ghost and it's freaking me out. This <laughs> or alternative of- title, my dog's on Prozac. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. To start off, I got home this morning from being out and decided to take a nap. My dog came along and fell asleep right next to me. After about an hour or so, he starts growling quietly. It soon 
grows louder to the point where I sit up and then he starts barking. I have never heard him bark so loud and mean. I then see all the hair on his neck stand up. All while he's doing this, he is looking around the room, moving his head back and forth, almost watching something circling my bed. When I saw this, I screamed out, if you're not here in the name of the Lord, leave. And it all (laughs) stopped. (laughs) Yes. In the name of the Lord. I just like that, like she converted into like one of those like medieval pastors. Like, if you are not here in the name of the Lord, leave. <laughs> was like, was this a Mormon household? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't say, which is really unfortunate. <laughs> in, in all seriousness, no, can't. I've heard dogs can see ghosts, but I have no idea. Uh, the animals have like a special little like third sense to them or something but how do we know this i i don't understand how some of this is like public knowledge like we know that dogs can't eat chocolate because like they die but like how do we know the dog sees a ghost i don't need to know that you stupid or something everybody knows that (laughs) yeah apparently i'm the stupid one yes thank you paul (laughs) (laughs) um i mean i think people have just kind of assumed because like a lot of times you'll catch an animal just like looking off into the distance, like yeah. But that just that, that sometimes it's just them being dumb. I was gonna say, I mean, yeah. animals don't have anything else to do but like sleep, eat, and look. Like I, I don't, I don't Listen, know if like the animal looking no. is like an indication. My, my dumbass cat saw a cactus, bit it, hurt himself, and then bit it again. These are not like always the most intelligent things oh in the gosh. world. It reminds me of like when they talk about how Athena used to have the owl in Greek mythology because they used to think that owls were smart. And then the research comes out that owls are like dumb as hell. Wait, I, really? Yeah, apparently owls are stupid. They just I look smart. I mean, Wait. it would make sense. They fly into windshields all the time. Aren't pigs really smart? Like legitimately smart? Pigs are like a, like a four-year-old in your house if you have a pig in your house. Yes. I want a pig now. <laughs> and i also no, found don't. out they i also found out destroy your home crows crows are really smart too apparently crows if they like you they'll create art for you now that would be a pet i would enjoy imagine I mean, coming home and there's like a beautiful open. mosaic on on the on the in the lobby of your house or something like i mean i don't what? know if I want artwork by crow they're omens so yeah, well, it has it's a good was, omen if it's like doing the art for you. It's like caw, I don't, caw. Get, I don't get the omen thing. You remember? I think black cats in ancient Egypt were like insanely good luck. Really? So, yeah, they were like I they like literally worshipped black cats. Like black cats in ancient Egypt were like the height of luck. Like if you had one, you were like the best. And See, somehow they got like moved to like the dark side somehow. This is but like. No, like the sociology of it, though, is like we're, we're taught to like think of these things like we're taught to think of crows as omens and owls are smart when in reality, you know, ravens are just loyal bitches who, you know, if you F with them, they will come for you. And I, I we I get that as a human to a crow. I get that instinct. Like, don't come to me <laughs> or else I will get the murder on you. Like, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Wait, was that the story or is there? Wait, no, no. The Lord. Okay. So re, let's uh, TLDR recap real quick. So in the room, dog scared out of its mind barking. She goes, Lord, if there is a ghost here, leave. And the ghost leaves. Well, so yeah, it stops. And it continues with, he would occasionally growl a little after that, but nothing like it was. Hmm. This has happened before when he starts barking at things that aren't there, but only seems to happen in my room and only when I'm sleeping. I don't know what to do. I'm petrified of this. And today has convinced me that is something dark. Hmm. That freaked me out. I would admit it kind of freaked me out. Meanwhile, I just like the idea of at the window, there's like a squirrel with like its middle finger raised up to the dog and she just doesn't see it. She's like, oh, where's the ghost? The squirrel's like. <laughs> <laughs> like some asshole raccoons just outside the window. They're like, sup, bitch. With its little hands doing like little hand things in the window. Yes. <laughs> just <laughs> it's like, I'm outside and you're not. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. What's another one? Okay. So this next one, um, it's a question one, which is kind of interesting. Um, can a ghost suddenly come to your house? So um, it starts off, I've lived in my house for over 10 years. My mm. dog started staring off at nothing yesterday. And this morning. Back to the dogs again. Yes, back to the dogs. <laughs> this morning, a hair product I use every day disappeared. 
I went back mm. and looked three different times, opened every drawer, cabinet, floor, garbage, <laughs> take a bag, and not there. The fourth time I went back, it was suddenly on my counter next to my makeup bag. My counter isn't that big, four feet maybe, and that's including the sink in the middle. So, Aren't there trickster ghosts? I don't tonight? think this is a ghost. I think you <laughs> just forgot you moved the shampoo. I mean, I listen, I don't think I'm the smartest person, but like my memory is so bad sometimes. And I'll be like, oh, I don't remember doing that. And instead of going, huh. There's a ghost in my house. I go, I'm probably the dumbass who moved that and forgot I moved that. Like, that's not ghostly to me. Now, it'd be one thing if there was like, ah, shampoos in the bathroom. That would be a ghost. That would be well, scary. You, this, this is why you don't have ghosts, because I know he won't be any fun. They're like, he'll just think he's a moron. Like, you won't believe Because I am. <laughs> they would be right to think that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean... It's no, what gets what me those... is that open like everything. So like, I mean, I don't know. What are those trickster things? Isn't that a thing? I mean, there are definitely ghosts that trick. Most often, it's like little kid ghosts because they like to do that. Um, That's just sad as shit. And then there's like the poltergeists, which are like the evil ones. I think, if I remember correctly, and they do like a little bit more. They do a lot of physical stuff. Hmm. You know what's interesting? I'm reading the comment section on this post, um, and someone says, a while back, I bought this old wooden handmade box with a hinge top from Goodwill. I kept it in my living room on this little sofa table. As the weeks went on, I started to feel spooked like someone was watching me. There was one instance where I saw a black shadow behind my TV in the corner of my eye. My dog noticed it, too. I finally realized it was the wooden box bringing all the weirdness after finding it wide open the sofa table almost every morning. I got rid of it immediately and haven't had any weirdness since. That's, that's wild. I, now, that's, that a, that, that's, a, that's weird. That's ghostly. No, I th- I think objects can be haunted. I do. Oh, oh, definitely. A lot of like things like can attach to like objects, and that's why like if you ever go to like a haunted place, they're always like, always, like don't touch it and don't take it because it will just follow you back. Oh my god, I can imagine like the items that like I would be tempted to take. It was like free donuts, free donuts at the haunted laboratory or whatever, and I'm like, oh, I'll take the donut I'm box. Walmart. I'm gonna be all over those places. <laughs> it's fifty percent off at Target, but it's all haunted. I just, <laughs> I'd still be in there, like, and that, and that, and that. so now I can't go thrifting. I I might run into something at the thrift shop. Is that what's gonna happen now? I mean, you just gotta take that risk. I still take it. I like the idea of a thrift shop opening and like they hundred percent guarantee that they have like incensed all the product. Like that would be a smart thrift shop. But- I saw this thing somebody had posted on Facebook Marketplace. I forgot what the item was. I think it was like a cabinet, but it just had a sign that said definitely not haunted. <laughs> <laughs> Which is basically its way of saying, Oh, this shit's haunted. Like you don't put the <laughs> sign that says definitely not haunted because like like I don't know. No one's asking for that, but now they see the sign. It's a no. It's a no. That's crazy. Oh man. Okay. Matt, if you could if you could hunt one place forever, where would you go? Ooh, one place. Like it has to be like a closed building. Anywhere. And Mackenzie, this for you too. I'm curious. If you had to a pick place. somewhere. I feel like I'd haunt a gay bar. Just because I feel like that would be like a lot of fun stuff would go down that I could be like, boo! Like people getting it out of the bathroom and I'm like rattling the door and they're like oh like i don't know i think that'd be fun that'd be funny how oh, oh, this one's hard maybe like a library probably so like apparently the griselli library is haunted and oh, it's haunted with depression i mean absolute straight <laughs> up students that are depressed on that i go into that library and it is like the morgue so yes i absolutely believe it's haunted but like I wouldn't mind hunting a library. I think it'd be like fun hiding behind like a bookshelf, just knock out some books. You could read. You could spend all the time reading. I could become smart. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I, I, I think <laughs> I think I would haunt a great clips. A great and clips. Like, great clips. Yeah. And like spell out shit on the floor with the hair, you know? Oh, that was a good <laughs> First of all, I feel like this is like an advertisement for Great Clips. Like this is when you, Paul, and I go. The other day, I needed a haircut, and so I went to Great Clips, where it was twenty percent off. Two, I feel like you spelling things out the hair that would get bored after like a week. Like what? Do you, you'd do that for a week, and then you'd be bored, right? And then you, we, then you just like nudge people when they're getting their haircut and just mess up their heads. That'd be fun. Take control of like the shave 
Shaver. <laughs> oh my god, the whole like you know how they have all that expensive product that no one ever buys at the at the <laughs> hair salon. Just all that stuff starts knocking down the floor. Either that, or I wouldn't do anything at all. I would just chill there all day and watch the boomers get mad about the check in online check in. You know. <laughs> oh my god, I recently did that, and like the two like old people glared at me, and I was like, "Listen, it happens every time." Listen, I think you can access this online. I don't know. Don't make fun of me. Listen, if you want to go to a place that doesn't have online reservations, go to like the old creepy barbershop where the old guys are. That like that, I don't know what to tell you. Sorry. No, I don't even care anymore. It's like, sorry, you didn't do this on your Nokia 3500, but like, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Your Razor flip phone could text in that you were on your way to Great Hips. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> okay, moving along. What's our next one? Okay, the next one is, I lived in a house where I'm convinced I was hearing slash seeing the ghost of the previous owner. Oh. So this one's a little bit longer. When I was young, my family and I would move around a lot due to my dad's job. I saw a lot of towns and cities along the way, and frankly, I, I enjoyed it. I was. This around is the first eight. person. This is the first person who's had to move a lot around as a child and enjoyed it. Every time, yeah. it's like we moved a lot around as a kid, and I made no friends, and I hated it, and I hated my parents. Like this is the first time, actually, it was fun to see places. Like, okay, good for them. <laughs> Go up. So I was around seven or eight when we moved to this certain house. I can't remember the town's name, but it was a small town with nothing around but a Walmart. Enough about the background. The house was rustic looking, not very updated. There was always this vibe about this house, like you weren't alone and everyone felt it despite trying to deny it. Hmm. The first time I heard anything was once when I got home from school. I was the first one home, so I decided to play video games. I was really into the game until I heard a creaking noise, like when something is leaning back and forth in the wind. I could hear it coming from the dining room. I put my ear up to the dining room door, and I'm certain the noise was coming from there. I open the door, and the noise stops, and I hear a huge thump. I feel a huge cold draft come out of the room. I try to figure out what the noise was, but never figured it out. Mm. That same night, I fell asleep in the living room and, again, was woken up with the creaking noise. I ignored it, but for some reason, I got this feeling of dread and looked towards the hallway and can see the silhouette of someone in the prone position on the floor. I thought it was my brother trying to scare me, so I turned back and start to fall asleep until I hear a quiet voice call my name. I immediately felt dread and pulled the covers over my head. I started to hear footsteps coming towards me and stop immediately above me. I am about to ship bricks in my head. I tell myself to start swinging. I didn't care who was standing there. I do just that and nobody is there. I go sleep in my mom's room and keep it to myself. The curiosity was killing me, so I asked one of the neighbors who had lived in the neighborhood for a while if he knew anything. The certain neighbor was an older man. He was usually a jokester and was always laughing and joking. As soon as I asked, his face turned serious. He asked me why I was asking so fast. Apparently, the previous owner killed herself. Apparently, she hung herself from the dining room chandelier. I swear I never felt chills like that before. I'm convinced I was hearing her body rock back and forth and that big thud that was there when the chandelier gave out. The only reason I say that is because the chandelier is no longer there. I think she heard Sia chandelier Ooh. and she took that song too seriously, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got I'm going to hell on that one. <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> hey, I'm going to have to jump off here in a second. So, Oh, gosh. Um, okay. Yes. There's some chaos up going on right now. So, oh my gosh. Well, hey, no worries. Um, we got time for one or two more, Paul. You tell me. Um, I might, I might have to get going. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, you know what? No worries, Paul. It's been good to see you. This was so fun. Um, actually, yes. you know what I might do? If Mackenzie wants to stick around, I kind of want to want to record like a bonus like sequel to this because I want to talk a few more. Okay. So, hey. Paul, we'll see you in the future. And uh, thanks for more ghost stories. And have a good rest of your night. Peace out. Later. Bye. Bye.